and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Hal Cruttenden and Miles Jupp, Alistair McGowan, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. <laughs> we start tonight with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? Uh, is Putin saying, them? did I put the cyanide in the tea or in the sherry? <laughs> Is Cameron, in fact, trying to upset Putin by trying to drink his sherry in the most gay way possible? <laughs> <laughs> Putin does look really relaxed, doesn't he? I think he's watching one of his favourite sports and there may be two bears killing a dog. <laughs> <laughs> what, Bear Bear Dog? I love Bear Bear Dog. Uh, <laughs> I'm watching on Russian television all the time. <laughs> Cameron, presumably, is just saying, two more sherrys and I invade Syria. <laughs> David Cameron tries to lighten the mood at the G20 by playing a tiny trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's not actually a picture of Mr Burns and Smithers? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think they're discussing election strategy. I think Putin's explaining how he's already won his next four elections. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it, they're playing uh, the Obama speech drinking game. Every time Obama says red line, they have to have a drink. <laughs> Maybe um, neither of them are speaking. Just taking a apart the entire <laughs> conceit. <laughs> of can I just say at this point that I can't do an impression of David Cameron? I don't think anybody can. And in fact, I think I was only asked on this program tonight because Dara actually uh, there was a point earlier in a week that Dara was not feeling very well. <laughs> um, so they said. Um, uh, no, we need to cover in case Aaron doesn't make it to the show and uh, the end of the recording. So uh, if you can come in and do that, would be great. Uh, Andy Barton. Yeah. 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 What a particularly savage Ed Byrne impersonation you're doing there. <laughs> and, uh, we I, never, I never knew he had a love child with Louis Walsh, but they seem to be living in <laughs> one giant house together raised by Terry Wogan. Anyway, so. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry, we won't let him insult you like that again. Do they have the uh, correct answer, please? They're at the G20. They, they are, right. of course, at the G20. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy Park. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, <laughs> very good. Very good. This is a picture of Vladimir Putin and David Cameron at the recent G20 summit when Russia played host to world leaders in St. Petersburg. The gathering was at times deemed to be frosty with leaders clashing over Syria. Do you think Russia were good hosts? No, I don't. I think they were great, were they? They slagged us off for being a small island. They did. And then David Cameron had to come forward and say, look, we've lots of achievements, including Shakespeare, yeah. The Beatles and One Direction. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, One Direction making it big in America at the moment. And we've got to thank the Americans, because, obviously, the, the more time they spend in America, the less time <laughs> they do in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I think the insult was in translation anyway, wasn't it? Because uh, Putin actually said little country, uh, and it wasn't about Britain, it was about Cameron, and he didn't add tree at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Uh, it it was very... They didn't feel that the G20 normally had a rap slam-down session <laughs> where countries <laughs> would bang the uh, others. Oh, Britain, you so small, you only got one time zone. Oh! Yeah. Can you hear me, Indonesia? <laughs> I think you can! <laughs> Sorry, Britain, you don't have a tundra region. Canada knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think that Britain does only have one time zone. I know Lowestoft is years behind us. <laughs> <that. laughs> if, if it was bad for Britain being insulted, there were countries who came out of it worse. Spain uh, have dropped out of the G20, and they just got an observer's seat. Which is like invites them to your dinner party and going, well, I've got a, an old deck chair. You can sit <laughs> over here and you can watch the, the, the chat going on. And there's some we'll, mismatched cutlery we can give you. We'll, we'll chuck chat. you a drumstick every now and every again. Day, you know. <laughs> You're right there, Spade. See, see, well up there. <laughs> and the seating plan, do you, do you see all the hassle with the seating plan? Mm. Well, it's a great shot, isn't it? It's a fabulous it's shot, isn't it? When do they put in the massive roulette ball? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Who, who's going to speak next? We'll find out with this. <laughs> yeah. Spain, Spain has to run around the outside. Yeah. <laughs> 
And when... Being chased by a yeah. bull. Yeah. <laughs> Spain has to run around the outside. They have to tap somebody in the shoulder. The person has to get up and run after Spain. And if they catch Spain before Spain get into their chair, then they get to keep their place in the G20. <laughs> Me, that looks like a, a meeting of the BBC bosses to discuss the overspending problem. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just throw a load of money into the middle and we'll wrestle for it? Uh... <laughs> so there's no way into the middle that there would be some point where somebody would have called for an aid and gone, I've dropped my pen. <laughs> 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 get my pen and <laughs> discreetly lower themselves into the middle of the moran. <laughs> so he puts the pen back out again. Don't mind me. <laughs> the uh, what gift, by the way? Do you know what gift Russia gave? Oh yes, uh, coasters. No, uh, the ashes of Kim Philby. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it might have been a tea towel. <laughs> Oh, they've been great in a tiny ashes thing. Yeah. Uh, they're going to play spying tournaments every two years for the ashes of Kim Philby. <laughs> was it Bill Bryson's book, Notes from a Small Island? Oh, that would have been a zinger. Fantastic. Maybe you've read it. Uh, it covers your entire country in 200 pages. I think Canada knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> was it like, was it more like... that at an international level. Zing! Uh, <laughs> I did like one of those Russian dolls with Cameron on the outside and then Gordon yes. Brown in that and then Tony Blair inside that. And it descended and then down all the way back to church. Yeah. All the way down to church. It was, it, was a set, it was a set of Russian dolls with, with a British Prime Minister. So, so Ted, Ted Heath was inside Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. <laughs> it would have come as oh. a surprise to a lot of yeah, people. Yeah. <laughs> and a first for Ted Heath. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on. What's going on here? Is it bring your son to work day? <laughs> if that is a corgi <clears throat> by the Queen's blanket, that needs a bit of grooming, doesn't it? <laughs> it's child that... uh, saying, Andrew's down, they've got him, he fell for it completely. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is the Queen going, look, the Middletons are driving themselves? <laughs> There's a queen saying, uh, Oh, look, Charles, there's Helen Mirren. I'm going to be playing her in the new Danny Boyle film. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. possible they are just enjoying the badger cull. <laughs> 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 maybe, um, maybe they're not speaking. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Stop undermining <laughs> the structure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whilst the Queen was up in Scotland, who was found by police in Buckingham Palace Gardens? Uh, this was Prince Andrew. Yes. And uh, apparently the police stopped him. They thought he was a waster, and it turned out they were right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a voice, and to me, he'd go, State your business. He'd go, yeah. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Ten years enough. You there with the tan and the golf yeah. clubs. Before you get into that helicopter, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah. They said they thing. wanted him to prove that he was a royal, and apparently he just stand, stood around doing nothing. And they took that as sufficient proof. <laughs> so... Do you know the most stupid thing about this is he apparently said to the policeman who stopped him, he said, do you know who I am? <laughs> and to which the answer is, clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> he, does, he does have that look of a man who's eaten Prince Andrew. <laughs> He actually lives in the garden. He was found in the garden, wasn't yes, he? Yes, was. he was. Do you think he actually the lives garden? in the garden? <laughs> <laughs> he had a big, a big bag like stick of the dump. Exactly. Does he live in the garden? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Has he fallen so far down the royal <laughs> packing order that he now actually just lives in the garden of, of nuts and <laughs> berries? And <laughs> yes. What was the timeline of this, though? Was this before the burglary or was this after the burglary? It was, was after. Sorry, there was, a, yeah, there was a burglary. A, a man broke in two yeah. days before. Two days before. Yeah, hence there was a lot of... They were all in a little bit more... Yeah, yeah. I didn't think that man was still hanging around there, did they? Two days they, after they the They often returned to the scene of the crime. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is one of the things I've learned about the criminal class. Yeah. 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 Who, um, who did they contact, by the way, to give a comment on this break-in? Oh, Michael, Michael, Michael Fagan. Oh. Michael Fagan. <laughs> Michael Fagan, who broke into Buckingham Palace 30 years ago and sat on the edge of the Queen's bed for an hour uh, until eventually... I think it's like she said, would you like a cup of tea? And said, I'll just ring for one. Something in my room! <laughs> uh, <laughs> How do you like a cup of tea? <laughs> they said that was very dangerous, didn't they? Because he sat on the edge of the Queen's bed. But the edge of the Queen's bed is up to a quarter of a mile away from the Queen's <laughs> <laughs> I can't 
can't believe people aren't breaking in the whole time to Buckingham Palace. It's one of the few places where there's a flag to tell you if anyone's home or not. <laughs> I, bet they, I bet they don't cancel the milk or anything. You, know? <laughs> you think as they leave, they're about to put down and she goes, no, no, but leave the flag up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> leave the flag up and one light in the hall. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Because uh, the whole country was shocked, I think, by the burglary. Everyone thinking, how can you get an intruder into the palace? We were all shocked by it, except Helen Mirren, who's probably thinking, right, that's another film for me to do then. <laughs> probably get Liam Neeson the, the Queen the... too. Who's yeah. in my house? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Liam Neeson yeah. playing the burglar. Liam yeah. Neeson playing the burglar, going, so, you're probably wondering how I got into your bedroom, Your Majesty. How does Aslan ever get anywhere? <laughs> Came in through the wardrobe. I honestly thought you were going to go with Taken instead. Uh, I was yeah. <laughs> going to Taken. say, oh, I, I have a very specific set of skills. Uh, uh, I just my, see adult films, I just see the child films. Yes, what, oh, sorry, yeah. what is anyone talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, perhaps, yes, Miles, yes. we weren't talking. Very good. The end of that round, the points go to Miles, Hal and Andy. <laughs> now we play a round called Set Your Phasers to Fun. <laughs> this game involves Hal and Gary, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. First subject is building. Who wants to come in on that? Ha, ah, crotton. Building um, freaks me out a bit. Well, builders. Builders intimidate me, cos <laughs> I've had builders come to work at my house and they, they, they work for, like, two days, then go away for a week. <laughs> and you end up making that phone call to them and it, it makes me feel like a little kid whose parents have split up and the dad's being really crap. It's the same conversation. You're just going, you, you said you'd come on Saturday. You said you'd be here on Saturday. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry, mate. I've been really busy. I can make it Tuesday. Do you promise you'll come on Tuesday? <laughs> can we go to the park? I love you. <laughs> I've, I've intimidate me. I've, I've had a builder come and give me a quote on a problem in my house and make it worse right in front of my face. Literally, feeling my wall, going, yeah, feel, feel that damp, mate, that's chronic, that's soaking wet, yeah? All round there, that's soaking wet, yeah? I put a little knife in, yeah? Watch it crumble. <laughs> Look at the plaster <laughs> fall away from your wall. Look at the size of that hole in your wall. <laughs> that hole wasn't there when you arrived. It's massive, isn't it, mate? It's massive. <laughs> no other job does that. No other job diagnoses a problem by making it worse, do they? Nobody, you know, doctors don't go, I think you've got brittle bones, mate, I do, and then stamp on your leg, do they? <laughs> See that, mate? Your leg was like a twig, yeah? <laughs> I think you got a dodgy heart as well. <laughs> Boom! See, you having a heart attack, you see? <laughs> I, I actually tried to help this builder finish our kitchen, and he just stopped and went, mate! And I kind of jumped, cos I'd been momentarily transfixed by the beauty of the bubble <laughs> and the spirit level. <laughs> <laughs> he just stopped. He said, seriously, mate, leave it. You don't know what you're doing, I'll finish it off. And that night I had a dream that I was making love to my wife. <laughs> and he walked in and said, seriously, mate, leave it. You don't know what you're doing, I'll finish it off. Thank you very much. How Sunday. <laughs> OK, it's Gary now, so let's see what topic you've got, Gary. Let's spin the wheel. Topic is childhood. <laughs> As a child, I was made to walk the plank. We couldn't afford a dog. <laughs> My six year old refuses to eat anything other than alphabetic spaghetti. Luckily, he's dyslexic, so I just buy him normal spaghetti. <laughs> Seems to work. Dad, these are all L's. Yeah, it's Welsh. <laughs> I bought him some medicine for his ADHD. On the side of the bottle, it said concentrate. I thought, if he could do that... <laughs> I bought a really nice 12-year-old scotch. Obviously, his parents weren't pleased. <laughs> I hate people who complain about breastfeeding in public. Like, I don't want to see it, or that's disgusting, or you can't do that, you're not a woman. <laughs> Yeah, 
and that's not a baby. <laughs> As kids, we always enjoyed dipping ginger nuts into a steaming hot cup of tea, but, of course, nowadays, that's called bullying. <laughs> I shouldn't do that, by the way. Ginger jokes are the last vestiges of racism in comedy, and they started a ginger pride movement to stamp that shit out. They had a march in Hyde Park. Well, they were going to do it when the sun came out. <laughs> Nan always said that when she was young, she never had to worry about leaving her back door open. What a slag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally going to get in trouble with the family again. This is really not worth it. <laughs> You've got to look after your health as you get older. The other day, I did a poo and noticed there was a little blood in it. Yeah. I said, Oi, bruv, get out of my toilet, innit? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well done, Guy Delaney. Well done, both of you. Hoist for both of you. Come on back. <laughs> Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Alistair, what category would you like? Uh, I'll go for sport, please. OK, Grant, your category is sport. The answer is 56 years. What is the question? Well, is it um, Eddie Izzard's next challenge for sport relief? I'm going to run for 56 years without stopping. <laughs> um, in three languages, where the family of chinchillas. <laughs> <laughs> is it when somebody says they're 13 online, how old are they actually? <laughs> is it uh, when is the next train to Morden via bank? <laughs> <laughs> is this... How old Dara will look when he's 45? <laughs> oh, no. It was just so suggest. Fair. Just 45, 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> is it how long have BT been telling me my call is important to them? <laughs> it, is it what is the age difference between the male and female presenters on Sky Sports News? <laughs> <laughs> Is it uh, how long is part two of The Hobbit? <laughs> how long uh... does 56 year Ron Sale Woodstain last for? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know about you guys, but this is the age of consent for my daughters. <laughs> <laughs> is it at the time of the Big Bang, how long had Bruce Forsyth already been alive? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long? You could travel in space <laughs> <laughs> with the right oxygen supply and just Darrow Bean for company. Thank <laughs> 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 okay. you. Okay. We'd it... both be very happy, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, how long is the gap between each edition of the monthly magazine I'm No Good at Maths? <laughs> 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 is it, um, pick an arbitrary length of time? <laughs> <laughs> is it, how much bad luck if you break a glitter ball? <laughs> Proper joke. And you know what's yeah, what is it the gap between Tokyo Olympics? It is absolutely okay. the gap between different Tokyo Olympics. Thank you very, very <laughs> much. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. yes, the question I was looking for is what will the gap between Olympic Games be for the newly announced 2020 host city Tokyo? This is news that Tokyo has beaten rivals Madrid and Istanbul to stage the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics. The last time the city hosted the Olympics was in 1964. <coughs> well, France is going to be pissed off, aren't they? Because, like, Japan's got it, Spain didn't get it, and Turkey didn't get it. Now, Spain didn't have any money, Turkey's next to a war zone, and Japan's had some nuclear meltdown and still Paris can't get the games. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't the 2020 Olympics Olympics for people with perfect vision? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, harsh with the, the 2020 Paralympics blind <laughs> events, if you expect that as well. <laughs> I think the mascot for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics has got to be Godzilla, hasn't it? I mean, it'd be, it'd be fantastic. They're all doing the sailing, and then suddenly this mascot looms out of the sea. <laughs> They'll break world records. They'll never have sailed that quickly. <laughs> they said, didn't they? They said that, that, that um, Fukushima was no problem because it's uh, how far away is it? It's 100 miles yeah, away. So that gives them lots of time to stop the mutant lizard destroying the opening ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Boris Johnson was going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, uh, the, so what, the, what is the Japanese government going to do about Fukushima? In my experience, these things tend to sort themselves out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give it a couple of million years, it'll be fine. <laughs> this too shall pass. <laughs> <laughs> Just Ten million years. Yes. Just hope during the Olympics the rowers don't fall out of their boats, you know, into the radioactive water. Double skulls? Yes, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Copter's fours. I'm with yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, the Fukushima is, is, yeah, they're going to build an ice wall to trap the water, because the water's dripping out of me. Is it being solved by the X-Men or something? Yeah. I'm not saying they're going to build it with their minds. <laughs> uh, they're going to have to take with the <laughs> machine <laughs> and stuff. They're going to storm, make ice wall with your breath. <laughs> <laughs> what will the ice wall do, then? You, you did physics. It'll so. block the, the bad things from getting into the other place. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I've, yeah. obviously, I've, you know, made it a little I bit more comprehensible. <laughs> They've actually restarted fishing off Fukushima, haven't they? And uh, so you can now apparently get real fish fingers and, uh, <laughs> and, and a cod drumstick. So, uh, <laughs> Which sports, by the way, uh, are back in the Olympics and look like they weren't going to be in? Whaling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You watch, they'll be yeah. right back in this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kiss chase. <laughs> yeah, kiss chase is in, yeah. <laughs> Hide and seek, they're doing that. Hide and seek was. Somebody actually did propose hide and seek. Iraq would win yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which of David Cameron's current favourite projects is coming under increasing criticism at the moment? This is the uh, HS2, the high speed rail link between London yes. and Birmingham. Yeah. National well, Office have said that it is based on assumptions that don't actually tally with real life. And I'm guessing one of those assumptions is the idea that anybody wants to get to Birmingham in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> But they keep talking about the spiralling costs, and I think, well, why build it as a spiral? Surely, if we just built it flat. <laughs> <laughs> it's we, should be, we should be proud of our rail network anyway, because the, the British rail network is absolutely fantastic. The British trains provide, for example, unparalleled views of the British countryside, don't they? Often without the blurring effects of velocity. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently it's going to cost £80 billion, £80 billion, and you're thinking, surely it would be cheaper to find anybody who wants to get to Birmingham in a hurry and just buy them a house in Birmingham. <laughs> For £80 billion, yeah. pounds, £80 billion pounds, you could knock down Birmingham and rebuild it closer to London. Exactly. <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Alistair, Hugh and Gary. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please, <laughs> I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things for a sports commentator to say. <laughs> and the starting pistol's gone off. And Oscar Pistorius has got his arms in the air, <laughs> claiming his innocence already. <laughs> well, good news here in Flushing Meadow. Murray has broken Djokovic. Both legs, one arm. He won't recover from that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, clearly that's a dive by Tom Daly. So it's one all at half time, and uh, oh, sorry, I'm finding it hard to concentrate here. Gareth Southgate has just had me in absolute stitches. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an unfortunate wardrobe malfunction for the Ukrainian women shop putter there as a bollock pops out. <laughs> well, oh, do you know, I've completely forgotten when England won the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> One hundred and thirty kilograms. This would be a world record, but this small Peruvian is determined to swallow it and get it through customs. <laughs> <laughs> and as he approaches the corner at 200 miles an hour, they really need to check out this cyclist for drugs. <laughs> And, as a mark of respect, the Great Britain water polo team will be wearing armbands. <laughs> <laughs> Croquet does not get better than this! <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Well, my watch has three additional minutes. Don't buy a Rolex from a street market. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michael Owen. Welcome to the millions of you watching on BT Sport. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got four off one ball. There's a lot of children that Lance Armstrong has fathered. <laughs> <laughs> and the sumo wrestler grunts as his opponent enters the ring. Pretty sure that move's illegal. <laughs> Well, it's 1.30 and the covers are still on. Kevin Peterson simply won't get out of fucking bed. <laughs> <laughs> and Tiger Woods is going for his third hole of the afternoon. Surely by now he should have left the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the 2020 Tokyo Olympic sailing competition. Oh, my God! Godzilla! <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Commercials that never made it to air. I wipe my ass with Colgate. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I've got a ring of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> if it tastes like butter and spreads straight from the fridge, you've probably had a power cut. <laughs> <laughs> Condoms, because if she'd sleep with you, she'd sleep with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Ryanair, because I'm worth shit. <laughs> As leader of the Labour Party, I always like to look my best. It's very important to me to have a smooth finish, which is why I use the Mac 4. As I often say, that was a close shave, wasn't it, Grommy? <laughs> Frosty is there. They're all right. <laughs> New BG from Garnier. Exfoliates, hydrates, epilates, urinates. Probably not that last one. <laughs> Unlimited minutes, unlimited texts, unlimited music downloads. Yes, it's our new twat-on-a-train tariff. <laughs> Have a break. Have a wank. <laughs> Maybe she's born with it. In which case, I probably shouldn't take the piss. <laughs> <laughs> Bekele has to walk for five miles every day for fresh water. That's why she ought to be thinking about the new Mazda. <laughs> <laughs> Coco Chanel. So it's bloody horrible. I'm sticking to Horlicks. <laughs> Lidl, because life didn't work out as you planned. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin Bacon, doing an ad on British TV. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got that bloated, uncomfortable feeling in your stomach? Then try going for a shit. <laughs> <laughs> the DFS furniture sale is, is not currently on. This Christmas, get mocked a week on DVD featuring all the regulars. Doro Brin, and through this week, you guys Andy Parsons, <laughs> Will Milton Jones, um, and of course, don't forget Mickey Flanagan, East End of London, and of course, everybody, very good, Chris Allison. Hey, <laughs> everyone. Hey, At the end of that round, the point of Alistair, Hugh, and Gary. <laughs> And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Hal Cundiff and Miles Jopp. <laughs> Commiserations to Alison McGowan, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. <laughs>
More comedy tomorrow night here on BBC Two. Noel Fielding and Ross Noble bring their own surrealist trains of thought to QI at 10. <laughs>